Hi, thanks for joining me. It's been a long time. My name is Jasmine. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back and thanks for tolerating me. If you're new here, I am a colored pencil artist that specializes in realistic portraits of people. I have been drawing since I was a small Jasmine, but I have focused on realism for the last seven or eight years. Today, we are going to be going over three ways slash tools that come in handy for advancing as an artist. The first one is Adobe Photoshop Elements, which I'm going to go into detail today. And then in the next video, I think I'm going to break this up a little bit because this video is going to be quite long. Adobe Photoshop Elements is a really shortened version of Photoshop. This is a way for me to still get the basic tools that I needed to use because I don't need a full Photoshop program to use for what I do as far as combining pictures and stuff. That is also a cheaper version of Photoshop. It still allows you to change the lighting, the tone, contrast, add filters, effects. You can add layers, work with layers still, merge layers. You can add slash remove colors and it's fairly simple. Now I used to fuse pictures manually and by manually I just would draw things in a sketchbook in different ways and sometimes that would take up too much time and other times I wanted to try and figure out how I wanted a certain thing to face. Do I want it to face forward or face back or do I want it to be more blurry? Do I want to change the color of it? The cat is right next to my microphone so if you hear jingling it's her color. So sometimes I use pictures or I'll just draw a basic idea for several pictures on a first draft to see how it will look. Sometimes I'll just do everything on the actual final piece since it's, there's so many drawings that I've done that I've, I've never even had a first draft. I would just start drawing the final draft draft on the paper or start drawing on the final paper. Yeah, that's pretty much how I, I operate. There's very few drawings where I will do several versions of it on before I finish or before I move on to the final piece. Photoshop Elements has a quick mode and an expert mode. Quick mode, I mostly just utilize that when I'm doing color correction or basic cropping. I do like to use expert mode most of the time because that's where I can really change the image to fit my ideas and layer the images together and I don't possess the attention span to learn Photoshop. It looks really overwhelming to use and honestly most of those features I'm not going to have any need for. This is a great inexpensive way for you to get Photoshop and to have just the necessary things to do what you need to do. I use Premiere Elements for video editing. Editor that is a shortened version of Adobe Premiere. That is a pretty easy thing to learn. I do purchase these as a bundle. It's a lot cheaper than than buying each one separately. I also use Photoshop Elements for my YouTube thumbnails, which is great. It's easy to learn and they have a guided section on here where it will take you step by step using some of those features. But so having good quality images for video and social media, as I stated in my free 99 videos, is important because one, it's easy to draw from. And two, when you're editing the final images of your artwork, this is a way for you to do any color corrections, sharpen the image, whatever you need to do. You can display your art to the world the way that it's meant to. We're gonna get into some details of that today, specifically combining pictures, cause that is the thing that I use this most for besides editing the final images of my artwork and the YouTube thumbnails. Here is a, here's a couple of random images from Pixabay. So this is one that I actually already kind of altered because I was brainstorming and messing around trying to figure out what I wanted to do for an upcoming series. I'm not entirely sure if I even want to go through with this series. I just haven't decided yet. This is the original image and I'm going to show you guys how to take out this background. It's fairly easy to do. We're going to zoom in just a smidge. We're going to use the quick selection tool and I can highlight all of this area. Actually, I can highlight a little bit and it auto selects that so you can take it out. And then I can use these the move tool and I can take the bird out if I want to and then just hit delete and the background is gone. The background replacement, I have this. So I think I'm just going to I think I can drag and drop if I remember correctly. All right, so I have this dragged over here. I believe I just merged these. I merged this with this. It has like a, it created another layer there. So to make this a little bit easier. Okay, so we have this erase right here. And this is just a white area that it made. 
Um, I really don't want that there, so I'm just going to erase that. Okay, so we have this image here, and we're going to move back to this first layer. It has it set as a background. I guess that's how I did this before, because I have I, this is a file that I opened from before that I was using. And right here, this is still white. We want a transparent background. A really easy way to do that is just to hit this little magic eraser tool, and then... There it is. That is deleted. I'm going to take my move tool and then move this back over here and maybe just make this a little bit larger so we can show more of the moon. We're going to hit the little check mark and now we're going to right click it again and click send backward and there it is. If I wanted to draw this out, I might use that as a comp composition for this. It's fairly easy. You can kind of incorporate the same thing with other parts of this drawing. Another thing that I like to do is I like to play around with filters. So I'll go back to the quick mode and we're going to zoom out just a little bit. Da -da -da. We can change the color. We can change the tone of it, make it brighter or more unsaturated. I'm not sure if I want to do that yet. We can also go to the effects. If I want all of this to be like a purplish tone, I could play around with the uh, with the filters over here. There's a toy camera one. It's a filter. Um, that's one way to make everything kind of purplish. That one looks kind of cool. That has a more bluish tone. But yeah, this is uh, pretty simple. We can also uh, talk about the drawing that I recently did. Now, the one that I recently did, I used a lot of reference pictures. I used the ones that the customer gave me, but I also used the, the reference pictures from like Pixabay. I just had a whole bunch of pictures that I had to use. And the reason for that was I didn't have an actual image of the customer's family all in the barbershop settings. I pretty much had to build all of that. I had to construct all of that and figure out where everybody was going to be on the paper. Now that proved to be a really huge challenge. I had to change the light sources a lot. I had to change the light sources a lot because some of the images, the light source was either in the center or the top or the right side. And I wanted the light source in the actual drawing to all be from the left side. So I had to alter all of that pretty much in every picture that I had. Let's move on to this picture. Wait a minute, I think. I have several, um, I was looking for pictures of elephants this one particular day. What did I do? I think I just cropped this one out a little bit. This is the final image that I edited. Yeah, I just made it more trying to decide between that, but I think I still want to draw this one. I just got to figure out the color scheme because I don't want these primary colors. I want something different. I'm not entirely sure about the sky. So if I wanted to, I believe I could erase the entire background. It might let me do that. Hold on. Yeah, so I could erase the entire background if I wanted to. I would just hit the magic uh, or the quick selection tool again. And since it's a smart one, it will go pretty much around the section where you don't want it to erase. The yellow balloon might be a little bit because it's kind of similar. You can also go back and deselect some of what you're doing. It got rid of some of the strings, unfortunately. The strings of the balloon. So we're gonna zoom in just a little bit. Might have to do some of this erasing manually, but that's okay. I mean, if you can kind of get the general image, you don't have to be too picky about what you're erasing. You don't have to be super picky if you're not going to be like, if you're just going to be using this as a loose reference, just so you can kind of get an idea of where everything is placed on the paper. I did delete the background on here. As you can see, I went back and um, I used the eraser tool. I'm going to do the same on this side where I am erasing all of that white area. Since we're done with this, we're done with the select quick selection tool. You actually have to hit that before you go back with the eraser. So you have to hit that one uh, right before you... So this will let you just uh, erase the rest of that white area because with this, the quick selection tool it does take out the background but 
for you to add in another background, you can just use the quick erase tool. So that way you can have a transparent background. And let's go back and add in a different background to this one. We're gonna move this down just a hair because it looks like I moved the picture up a little bit too far. There, he's a little bit more stretched out. All right, let's look for an interesting background. Hmm. This kind of has the same color scheme. Uh, so I'm going to look at this astronaut picture that I have saved. I might be able to combine that. It's a pretty purple image, so let's try that. We're going to drag and drop it here like we did with the first image. And let's stretch this out just a little bit. Actually, you know what? We could probably take out these mountains now that I think about, about it. Let's take out the Grand, or is that the Grand Canyon? What is that? It's the Grand Canyon. Yeah, we're gonna take those out. Now all of that, let's make this a smidgen easier. You do have to deselect, just remember to deselect stuff before you go back in with the eraser like I just forgot to do. Just going with the giant eraser tool and then clean that up a little bit. There you go. Fairly easy, right? Let's go back to our astronaut background layer. I think I'm just going to move this over to the right a little bit. And then we're going to hit the check mark and then send that backward. That's pretty much how I do it. That's just what I play around with when I'm just brainstorming for new projects. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for the next one where we talk about Planoly, which is a scheduling app that I use. I'll show you how I use it specifically for my account because I have to market my artwork. I, I have to market my, um, I have to do all my sales announcements and things like that. I find it extremely useful. It saves me a lot of time. It tells you the best time to post, allows you to do 30 uploads in a month for free. It's a really important tool to have if you are serious in marketing your art. If you are an artist, professionally and you don't really know how to use social media. If you know how to use Instagram, Planoly kind of has a similar layout in, in how you can uh, upload things on there, but it does work well with Instagram. They're actually a verified partner of Instagram. I do highly recommend that, but I'll get more into that in my next video. So give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and comment some other video ideas. If you guys want me to go into depth about something else, like another tutorial, I would be more than happy to do that. So usually when I work on really large projects, I will use Planoly and that way I don't have to worry about my social media going. I find that it really helps in you managing your time so you don't spend as much time on social media. You can spend more time focusing on your artwork, which is more important than being on social media. If you want to save yourself a lot of time, be sure to check out Planoly in my next video. I will see you guys next time. Bye!